welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Jonathan, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm excited to have a really important conversation. You know, we, we go about our lives uh, fumbling around, trying to figure out ourselves, what makes us tick, what drives us, what our meaning and purpose is in, in our life. And, you know, I think people tend to, over time, they kind of figure out what that means in their personal life in terms of the friends that they interact with, their family, their hobbies, pastimes, whatever. But I'm not sure that always translates over into the workplace. And we, we spend, you know, so much of our time, our half or more of our waking hours at work and it's such a big, important part of our identity and our life and, and what we do. And yet so many people seem completely disconnected from their meaning and purpose at work. And, and as a result, they, they're not happy. They're, they're not engaged. They're not productive. And they're just kind of, you know, floating through life and, and not really uh, engaging in such a way that they were able to, to capitalize on, on all of the opportunities that are in front of them oftentimes because, because they're not even fully paying attention to it because they're just trying to get through their day, trying to get through this yeah. job they hate and, and move on and go home and, and, you know, uh, spend, live for the weekend kind of an idea. So yeah. what we're, we're going to be exploring together today is, you know, how can we counterbalance that, um, seeking career and life satisfaction through the way that we approach work. And you talk about this idea of winning the game of work. So we can talk about yeah. that in connection, yeah. but you know, it really comes down to knowing who you are, knowing your drivers, knowing what you're good at, and then connecting those pieces so that you can find fulfillment and meaning and purpose. Um, so anyways, that's what we're going to be discussing today. As we get started, I wanted to share Terry's bio with everybody. Terry McDougall is an executive and career coach and CEO of Terry B. McDougall Coaching. She helps high achieving professionals remove obstacles that keep them stuck so they can enjoy more success and satisfaction in their lives and careers. Before becoming a coach, Terry was a longtime corporate marketing executive where she led teams, develop strategies, and advise senior leaders for career happiness and success on your own terms. She's also the host of the Marketing Mambo podcast. Is that how you say it? Marketing Mambo. Yep, that's right. Marketing Mambo. That's a fun name. Uh, well, welcome again, Terry. It's a pleasure to have you. Anything else you would like to share by way of background or personal context before we launch on in? Uh the only thing I'd like to share is that, you know, I coach and write on these topics because I've experienced these topics, right? I was a very ambitious person that thought um, if I just, you know, did what you were quote unquote supposed to do, that naturally I would find success in the workplace. And it didn't take me too long to become disavowed of those uh, ideas that I had and realize that, you know, a lot of times when we go into the workplace that we don't realize that, we need to operate a little bit differently maybe than what we've operated in school and other parts of our life in order to get the the success that we may be uh, craving. Yeah, so. uh, well, that's well said. And and I can say the same thing. I, you know, I, I've definitely had periods of my life where, you know, it, it's one thing when you're in school, put your head down, focus, try to just get through, um, get trained, get those credentials so you can move on into yeah. the rest of your life. And you can put up with a lot for you know, a short period of time. But then what happens? You you go out into your career and now you have the next 35 whatever years to work. Yeah. And are you going to keep that same mentality the whole time? If you do, yep. you're probably going to wake up at some point in your mid forties and you're going to realize I hate this. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> what do you do? And then what do you do at that point? Um, and yeah. so I, so many people, we talk about midlife crisis, but it's not, you know, it, it's not necessarily just midlife. It's just, it's just people coming to that realization that what, where they're at, you know, they, they feel a bit cheated because they, they followed the script. They did what people right. said they should do to find yep. success, to find happiness and joy. And now they're there and they don't feel it. They don't experience yes. it. And then there's, right. they feel, they feel stuck. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's just so important that we really consider all of this. Um, and you talk about, 
you know, in your book, the title of the book, I really like winning the game of work. Um, yeah. So you, you want to connect your happiness and success, do it on your own terms, make sure that you're focusing on what matters to you. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and what yeah. went into writing the book and uh, the motivations? And then, you know, we can start to dig into some of those concepts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, I think that a lot of times people do not think of work as a game, right? Work is serious. Work is deadly serious, right? Like this is where we get the income that we use to live and to survive and hopefully to thrive. Um, and I think that it can be, you know, a little bit scary sometimes to, to step back from that and say, what options do I have here? You know, we, we do go into it much with the mindset that we've been trained on for the first, you know, 22 years of our lives where we're like, okay, I got to follow the rules. I got to pay attention to what my parents want or what the teachers want. Um, and if I do that, I'm going to be rewarded and I'm going to succeed. And so we come into the workplace and we, we look at it as, you know, less dimensional than it really is. And we also can sometimes kind of take ourselves out of it as a player in terms of like, oh, well, I have some unique strengths or, or whatever. We just come in and we say, okay, what's the goal? What do I need to do? And if I do all these things, if I keep my head down, if I work hard, if I, you know, raise my hand and wait to be called on, I'll be promoted when my time comes. And, you know, that was kind of my attitude coming into the workplace. Big motivation for me writing the book was that it didn't take me long to realize that once I got into the workplace, that if I was quote unquote playing by the rules as I understood them and doing all the things that I thought that I needed to do in the workplace, I, I found that I wasn't getting the results that I, I thought I would get. And, it didn't take me long to realize like, okay, maybe things are different in the workplace. And in fact, you know, I've spent 35 years observing and reading and learning. And, you know, I've been very lucky to work with some, you know, really great mentors and coaches along the way that really helped me step back and see the bigger picture of what goes on at work. And this is what led me to start thinking about work as a game. Because I think that what happens a lot of times is when people come into the workplace, they just presume that they know the rules and that, you know, it's like the rules are just the same rules that I've lived my life by and that I've observed in school. And if I was successful there, I'm going to be successful in the workplace as well. And that's, that's a mistake um, because, you know, we're all responsible for our own careers. And I think that what can happen very often is that it's, I, I like to use this analogy of like, and we've probably all seen, um, you know, rugby where all the players are in this big scrum, right? And they're all just, you know, fighting for the ball there. And when you're in the middle of that, you know, it's, it's a struggle and you're just like, okay, I just have to get this done, right? I have to grab that ball. And, and you know, we may feel like we're putting a lot of productive effort in, but the reality is, is that we're not seeing the big picture of what's going on around us. And if we can have the courage to step back from that and to say, okay, well, maybe I'm not going to get the ball right now, but if I step back and I see the whole playing field, I may start to see paths that get me to the goal of what I want to achieve that it's it's really about understanding what are your options for getting to where you want to go. But, you know, of course, that presupposes that you're clear on what it is that you want. Yeah. And it's very important for us to, to step back and say, well, if work is a game, what does it mean to me personally to win that game? Yeah. And it's different for every every person, right? And that's you know, I've had people ask me like, well, what does it mean to, to win the game of work? And I'm like, you know what, that is up to each individual person. And I think a lot of people never stop and think about it. Or they will say to themselves, like much what like I did earlier in my career, I, I said, well, you know, I want to make a lot of money, I want to get to a leadership position, you know, maybe ultimately become a chief marketing officer. Um, but as I rose in, as I started to figure out, you know, how, how you navigate and how you um, make impact so that you're rewarded and you move up, I moved up and I kept thinking, well, when I get to the next level, I I'll be happy, right? But then you get there and you realize like, okay, I'm still the same person. I just maybe have an office and make more money and have a higher title, 
right? So you, at some point, it's really important to step back and say, you know, personally, what is important to me? And am I an environment where I can fulfill my purpose for being here? Um, you know, I do feel like for me, I, I was actually really, really lucky early in my career um, that my, um, I actually didn't have kind of role models in my family because um, I was the first person in my family to graduate from college. And so, you know, my parents were, my dad was in a, a trade union, my mom worked for the post office, you know, so it wasn't like they were like, oh, this is what you do when you go into the corporate world. Um, you know, they just, you know, didn't have to worry about that. Um, but I had a boyfriend in college whose mom had done some career counseling and she gave me the book, What Call Is Your Parachute? When I got out of college and she said, before you apply for any jobs or interview, I want you to read this whole book and do all of the exercises. And I am so thankful that she, she did that because I was so anxious just to get a job and just start making money. I could have very easily found myself on this path to, you know, doing well, you know, maybe succeeding in some other career, but not it not being one that was aligned with who I am as a person. And so I, again, I'm thankful that I, I kind of did that introspection to say, like, what am I good at? And what do I like to do? And what has meaning for me? And so that set me on this path of, uh, you know, eventually getting into marketing, I started out working in a publishing company. But, um, you know, the bottom line is that I'm a creative person. And marketing gave me an outlet for me to be who I am and for me to bring my skill set and my strengths to that and get paid for it. Um, but, you know, I see with a lot of high achieving people that they're good at a lot of things and they can do a lot of things. It doesn't mean that they like them. It doesn't mean that they find meaning in them. And that's usually when you find people that are just really burnt out and stuck, you know, like you mentioned the, you know, the 45 year old who's like, they wake up one day and they're like, how did I get here? Right? Like I, I'm successful. I mean, I talk about working with people that are successful, but not satisfied, right? Like from anybody would look at them from the outside and say like, look at you, you work for this great company, you've got this good title, you're making a lot of money, you live in a nice neighborhood, et cetera, right? You're going to Hawaii on vacation. You know, you by, by most people's scorecard, they'd say, hey, you're successful. But they're in the middle of it saying, is this all there is, right? I don't know yeah. if I can muster the, the strength and the energy to go to work on Monday. Right. Yeah. And, and it's, it's the siren song of, you know, more power, prestige, more money. You, you think that that next position, that next role, that next promotion, that next raise is going to do it for you. And it, it just doesn't. I mean, there's a small subset of people that I suppose it does, you know, they, they just mm -hmm. really, they sure. just, they just love that more than anything else. But for most people, it, it, that really isn't going to, to be it for you. You know, that's not going to be enough. And so we, we need to connect, you know, the why for us, find our why, connect it to our work and, and high achieving people, like you said, they can probably do just about anything. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're very capable, they're driven, they can do lots of different things and be successful sure. in lots of different things. So if you can do lots of different things, why not try to focus on something that you enjoy, that you have passion yeah. around, that brings meaning and fulfillment to you? Because when you couple, you know, talent and capability with fulfillment and passion, that's where something really magical and great happens for you as an yes. individual and for the organization as a whole. That's mm -hmm. what people want. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I came across some some research while I was writing my book. Um, by this this author, and I believe he's a professor at Harvard Business School named Tom DeLong. And he says that he believes that high achieving people are addicted to external success or ex external validation, I should say. And uh, when I read that, I uh, like this big light bulb went off over my head because I thought this is something that I knew in my gut. And I mean, obviously, because I was driven by it myself, right? Like, okay, you know, I just did this amazing thing. What's next, right? Like, I, I want the, the you know, pat on the back, the add a girl. I want the, 
you know, the A, I want the, you know, the satisfaction of knowing that I did a big thing, right? Um, but it can get to a point where we really disconnect with our own connection to our desires and our own inner wisdom. And we, be, we do become addicted and we're like, we're looking for that next big thing. And it makes a lot of sense and it happens gradually, right? But if you think back in elementary school, like when we get the, the gold star on our paper, right? And, and we want more of that. And we get to a certain point where we, we start to delay gratification. Like, oh, I, I won't go out with my friends on Friday night. I'll stay home and study for my chemistry ex exam next week, right? Um, but it's worth it to us because when we get the A on the chemistry exam, we're like, okay, you know, like that, I was, I was giving up hanging out with my friends, which is, you know, that's our, our desire, right? Like maybe internally we want to go out and have fun, but the, the richness of that reward of getting the A and knowing that, oh, well, this is going to help me get into the college that I want to go to, et cetera. It just, it just builds on itself, right? And it gets to a point where we finally, you know, maybe get the, uh, the brass ring, like, oh, okay, I've gotten a great job, a high paying job at this company, but we've become addicted to it. So we continue to look for more and more um, of that kind of reward. And it can feel really hollow as we, as we become really successful and we're able to do that, but we're like, why, why am I not happy about this? Right. And then I also believe that we can start to almost fear that like, if I'm not driving myself constantly that I'm going to be a failure, you know, yeah. and, and we won't even allow ourselves to explore that gray area. Um, and I, I've seen it with a lot of people that I've worked with that they start to, to think like, if I don't give 110% all the time, I'm going to fail. I mean, I've literally had people that would say to me, um, you know, I just got a, I, I just got my performance rating and you know, it was a five for the third year in a row, five out of five, third year in a row. Um, but maybe they're they're working on a project and they're fearful it's not going to turn out as, you know, as they expect. And I'll say, well, what what's the worst thing that will happen that could happen if that doesn't turn out? And they'll literally say to me, like, I'm I'm afraid I'm going to get fired. And I think, really, you really think you're going to get fired? Like you are clearly valued by your organization if they're giving you a five out of five on your performance rating. But they're afraid to like test that territory between, you know, giving everything to work and finding a balance where they have energy left over to explore what they want to do and to explore their purpose and to you know, experience fun and joy and fulfillment. And it really is possible. Um, but I also believe that sometimes people, like if they're good at something, they don't think that it's valued. You know, they'll be like, oh, like a lot of, a lot of uh, high achievers don't have a very clear view of themselves. They will think like, if I'm good at this, everybody's good at this. And that's not the case. It's not the case. I mean, if we we really love to do something and we're good at it, it's okay not to be busting your tail constantly. Like you could just be in the flow of like that energy coming to you and you being able to invest it in things that you're good at, but you enjoy. That's allowed. <laughs> Yeah, there there is so much there you said that is is just spot on. And I I have to admit and I'm a little embarrassed to say and to admit, you know, that um you know, I that resonates with me. I I can see that myself. I can mm -hmm. see I can see um chasing th these external forms of validation. Uh there's an old book by the Gallup uh, Corporation um First Break All the Rules. Uh mm -hmm. came out, I don't know, 15 years or more so, so ago, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it speaks exactly to what you're talking about. Like the, these things that initially we were intrinsically motivated to do, like it was part of our fulfillment, our meaning, our purpose. We would do them. Nobody had to say anything to us. They yeah, didn't exactly. need to pat us on the back. We just did them because we loved them. Right. But then over time you start to add these extrinsic external rewards, uh, for doing these things that we would do anyways. 
and you start mm -hmm. to suck the the intrinsic the internal motivation out the of people, joy yeah the joy <laughs> and you replace it with the the external validation and yeah. and so part of that is just the way the education system is set yeah, up absolutely. uh it's 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 societal norms and values and how things you know it's why we think there's a certain way you know and, the, and we have mm -hmm. these expectations we need to fulfill mm -hmm. and and so at some point what you're saying what i'm hearing is that we need to kind of relearn what it's like as that that child to just find pure joy in reading a book rather than getting a gold star for reading it and then writing a book report and getting an a um like just read because you love to read yeah. right to go to yeah. work because you love what you're doing um but that that require we have to unlearn some stuff and we have to reconnect. we do we have to reconnect with what motivates us yeah, in some ways, and I mean, this might sound a little bit radical, but in some ways, I think we have to uh, heal from the trauma of our schooling, <laughs> you know, and, and I, I mean, I don't say that lightly, because, you know, I was a good student, and that enabled me to be successful professionally. And I'm really, really proud of everything that I did. And I, I feel happy about that. But I also will say it wasn't always completely aligned with who I was. And, you know, really what, what the pivot point for me was to go from working in the corporate world for so long to becoming a coach was that I was finding that, you know, that I always think of, um, I always think of work in the, especially in the corporate world of being, you know, it's a balance, right? Like if you're going to do things in your job that you enjoy, and when you do that, you're going to get you know, your your tank's gonna be filled up, right? You're gonna feel energized by that. But there, you're gonna have to do some things that you don't enjoy. And as long as you have enough energy in your tank, you're gonna be able to deal with those things that are a bit of a pain, right? The things that you don't love doing. But what can happen at times is that the balance goes where you're enjoying less and less of what you're doing and you're having to deal with more and more of the stuff that you don't enjoy. And that, you know, frankly, that's what happened with me in my, in my last job. And it really, it was a bit of a crisis, you know, because I was saying to myself, like I made a lot of money and I was the primary breadwinner for my, my family, but yet I wasn't happy. And I was trying a lot of things to try to figure out like, how can I make this work? And, um, you know, if I, if I really was alone with myself, I had these fantasies about like, I just want to walk out. I want to do something that's more entrepreneurial that I have more control over. Um, but it's scary. It's scary to think about that. Um, but when I did leave, I said to myself, what are you good at and what do you like to do? And I had to kind of step away from this idea that I was a marketer because like before that I would say to myself like I, I actually related very closely to like that being my identity. I'm a marketer, right? And what I when I really thought about it, what I realized that I liked about marketing, I like the creative, you know, the creativity and, you know, creating advertising and events and all that kind of stuff. But what I really, really liked was the interaction with individual humans. You know, whenever I would go and talk to the managing director of one of the businesses and understand what's his issue, what's his problem, right? And then help coming up with a solution that helped him and his team personally to be successful. That was super exciting for me. And then when I looked at people on my team and said, okay, well, what do, am I, you know, driving them to reach these goals so that I'll be successful? honestly no i mean i i was not as driven probably as maybe i should have been about like oh i want to beat the control on the last campaign we did i really was like how can i help you grow in your career how can i help you interact with your internal clients more effectively like i just love that coaching and mentoring aspect of what i did and consulting aspect of it and so i i started thinking about like what what would i like to do that feels more authentic to who I am. And it was super scary, honestly, to, you know, I, I would, I, I've used this analogy a lot that, um, you know, in those times when I started to feel that dissatisfaction really, you know, bubble up where like the balance of the, the fun stuff versus the not fun stuff got 
you know, <laughs> skewed towards the not fun stuff. I felt like I was in like one of these uh, skydiving planes and, you know, the, the doors were open and I kept looking out and thinking like, I really want to jump. I really want to jump. But I was really afraid that if I jumped that I'd just go splat immediately on the tarmac. But I eventually, you know, was courageous enough just to be like, okay, I guess I'll, I guess I'll figure it out. Um, and I did, you know, and it's, it's not, it's not necessarily easy to start going your own way, but boy, it is so wonderful to feel free and to feel like it's up to me. It's scary sometimes, but it's up to me, but it also is, is good to be able to choose the things that I invest my energy in. Um, and to, to know that, you know, I don't have to worry about anybody else judging me besides myself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, maybe it's, it's been implicit in what we've been talking about, but you know, certainly for us as individuals, we need to focus on it. Right. You, you've already mentioned, like, we can't expect our employer to do this for us. Yeah. Uh, exactly. We got to, we got to figure it out for ourselves. So as leaders, you know, if I want to leadership such a burden, like you, you carry a heavy weight around mm -hmm. with you yeah. all the time. So it better be worth it. Like you better enjoy it. The, the empowering, the, the coaching, the mentoring, the, the mm -hmm. helping other develop other people. Like that's a huge part of what leadership is. And so you better mm -hmm. enjoy that. Otherwise you're going to find yourself, you know, with a lot of dissatisfaction, I think. Um, so certainly we, as individuals, we need to focus on that. Um, but I think as leaders, we need to help our people to take ownership over their own life and their own career uh, and yeah. create an environment where they can do that exploration, where they can figure it out. And then we can help and support them, but we can't do it yeah. for them, right? Right, right. I think it's really important for people to get clear on their own goals, you know, in their career and, and, and to, to go there, right? Like if you in your heart of hearts really want something, say it out loud and put a period at the end of it. What I see way too often when I'm working with people is, I mean, coaching is all about understanding number one, what is the goal? We're not gonna be able to get there if we're not clear on the goal. So getting clear on the goal is job one in coaching. And I think in managing your career it is as well. Um, but so often I'll see people that'll they'll either say, oh, I don't know, I don't know what I want. I believe everybody knows what they want. They just are afraid to say it because they're fearful they won't get it. But even if they do say, well, I really want this, they will immediately, many people immediately will pile on like the 101 reasons why they can't have it. Well, if I get to that next level, you know, to get to the next level, I have to have an MBA. Everybody who's there has an MBA and I'm 45 and that's too old to go back for an MBA. Like all of the excuses of why they can't have what they want. And I just try to, you know, explain to people like, let your baby live, like let that dream live. Like don't smother it before it's even taken its first breath. You know, let it live, let it breathe. And then separately, let's focus on, well, if, if you were going to have that as your goal, let's start thinking about ways that you could get it. I, I have been honestly amazed at uh, how quickly I've seen people actually get the thing that they want once they start to believe it's possible. Because yeah. we're surrounded by people, we might not even realize it, but we're surrounded by people that can make things happen on our behalf. They can introduce us to people. They can give us ideas. Um, they might even have a job that would be perfect for you. But we have to say it out loud. We have to be willing to step a little bit into the gray area and have hope. Like, okay, maybe this is possible, right? But I think the reason why most of the time we don't do that is that we're just fearful. We don't want to be disappointed and we want to protect ourselves. But you know, no growth happens in your comfort zone. Yep. You have to take a step outside of it. Even a, a toe outside your comfort zone helps you to expand that. And then if you keep, if you keep doing it and doing it, and then you may find yourself that there's, you're, you've got, you're surrounded by a lot of possibilities, which is exciting. It can be scary, but it, it is scary, but yeah, like you said, you, you start, you take that step into the darkness and you, and step by step, you start to expand, um, 
that comfort zone, you start to mm-hmm. realize it's not as scary as you thought it was. And, you know, we're, we, we live in illusion of, we, we, as humans, we like Absolutely. certainty, we like predictability. Mm-hmm. Of course. And so, so we think, you know, like life, the way we have, we're comfortable, it, we're, we have certainty and mm-hmm. predictability and, it, but it's an illusion. Like we're not, it is an illusion. Th- things are changing around us all the time anyways. And so, Absolutely. you know, if we can start to expand our comfort zone, uh, get a little bit more comfortable with the ambiguity and the messiness, uh, you know, then all of a sudden there's all these new, new possibilities we never even probably saw before. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I going back to the analogy that I was talking about, like jumping out of the, the airplane, um, you know, I was so scared to do it. But once I did, I realized that there's so much freedom, right? I can do backflips. I can, you know, I can go over this way. I can go over this way. I've got so much more area that I can cover. I'm not confined to, you know, between the two guardrails that I was in the corporate world. Um, and going to your um, your excellent point about us living an illusion, right? Like things, what we think is certain is an illusion. I do a lot of um, career transition coaching, and I've talked to many, many people, like within a day or two of them being informed that their job's been eliminated. You know, it's a big layoff. The company's been sold. Whatever. It's not. It's not for cause. They've been doing a great job, but just the needs of the business have evolved and they don't need that role anymore. (sighs) You know, people that have worked for companies for, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, and they are shell shocked because never in their wildest dreams did they imagine this, that this was possible. And it's, it's normal to feel panic. It's normal to fear, to feel fear. And, you know, a lot of times people are like, oh my gosh, who's going to hire a 55 year old, you know, and all of this. But, you know, once, once they're able to sort of like get over that emotional response to what happened and start to really look at what is right. Like when you're, when you're present and you're thinking about like, okay, let's, let's kind of process the emotions and get them out of the equation. And let's get to the point where we can just look at the reality of the situation that's the that's the arena of possibility um and you know it's it's hopeful as well because i've seen plenty of people i mean i've worked with people in their 60s that got laid off and got great new jobs you know and and sometimes it can happen very quickly um it often requires them to kind of step outside of their comfort zone and you know not just sit behind the computer screen and apply to a lot of jobs on linkedin which in many cases have already been filled, by the way, (laughs) Um, you know, networking, getting out there and, you know, honing their story and starting to to talk to people and believe in possibilities. That's where you find the possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Terry, it has been a real pleasure talking with you today. Uh, I I think we could continue on and on and on because (laughs) there's just so much here uh, to explore. Um, But I do appreciate your time, your insights and sharing with my audience. Uh, Before we close, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your book, your your consulting work, uh, your coaching, uh, and then give us the last word on the topic for today. Yeah, well, so um, you can learn more about me or set up time to chat with me if you're interested in that at my website, terrybmcdougall.com. I'm also interested in getting connected with anybody that would like to get connected with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm very active out there and my handle is terrybmcdougall. If you're interested in checking out my book, it's available on Barnes and Noble and Amazon. And again, the name is Winning the Game of Work, Career Happiness and Success on Your Own Terms. And if you're uh, a marketing nerd like I am, because I spent so many years in marketing, um, my podcast is Marketing Mambo. It has its own website at marketingmambo.net. And I have conversations with people in and around the world of marketing on their perspectives on the the function, on the industry, uh, et cetera. And, you know, even though we talk about marketing, it really is just great connections with smart and interesting human beings. Um, in terms of uh, my last word, my last word uh, for everybody is that your happiness matters. You are put here on earth with unique skills and gifts that only you have. And 
you're going to be happier and you're going to serve the world better if you step into that and, you know, pursue what makes you happy. The world's going to be a better place if you do. Amen. I completely agree. Um, I, I've loved this conversation. Thank you so much for all your insights. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, uh, f- check out the book, uh, check out uh, what Terry and her work can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.